So here we have a PlayStation 4, PS4 motherboard that was mailed to us by Cesar. I mentioned this board a uh, few videos back where I said that Cesar sent us a Facebook message and he said that he attempted HDMI port repair and as a result he damaged a lot of the pads under the port. I showed you an image of what Cesar sent us on Facebook. Okay, right here. That's the image that he sent us before he mailed this board over. And we can see the extent of the damage here. There is at least five missing pads here. And we have to know where each pad connects on the board so we can make a proper connection, jumper wires. And Cesar was inquiring about the price and about the possibility of fixing this board. So we told him that it will cost them $110 if we can get the job done. Or if we fix the HDMI port, we ran all the wires, we created the jumpers, uh, and the board still does not work, we will still charge him $50 for the repair attempt because this is going to take a lot of our time. Uh, Cesar agreed, and he sent the board over. We're going to do our best to see what's going on with the board and fix whatever we see wrong and send it back to him. Considering there's no other issues on the board, then the board should work. Now, I have made a HDMI pin layout based on other boards that we have in our shop here, and I labeled where every pin connects on the board. For example, starting from the left is pin number one. Pin number three, 12, 15, and 18 are ground. Pin number six is not connect. It doesn't connect to anything. Pin number two, if we have a missing pad, we have to run a wire over to this component here. Pin number nine, if we have a missing pad, we have to run a wire all the way here. So I made this layout based on his board. I took a picture with my cell phone, uh, not the greatest picture, but we do see a solder blob here. We do see possibly some flux here that needs to be cleaned up. I did not notice any missing components, which is good. We do see that Cesar applied a lot of heat onto the board and some of the components, uh, they look burned, but it doesn't mean that the components are not good. These components can take a lot of heat. We're going to run wires from the connector, from the missing pads onto those components so we can make this HDMI port work again. So let's take a look under the microscope to see what's going on. This is loose, this is semi-connected, loose, loose. So almost all the pins are loose on this board, not a single one connected. And these are the missing pads here. It shouldn't be too difficult to take that port out because uh, a lot of the pins are not soldered. Almost all the pins are not. And now we can take a look at the pads to see what's going on. Okay, so it appears that we still have unloaded solder in the holes and that will be very hard to wake off. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply leaded or low melt solder, mix it with the unleaded that's inside the holes and then we're going to wake everything out. We're going to get our awesome wake here. Very, very good wig, a lot of braids. It sucks a lot of solder. So that's our new HDMI port here. What I'm going to do is solder a few pins from the front. So we can hold the connector in place. Then we're going to solder the back legs. Then we're going to come back to the front and finish off soldering the front pins. OK, 
okay? It doesn't matter if we have bridges now, we're gonna fix those later. I just wanna hold that connector in place. And let me just do a little bit here. So we are done from the back. Just wanna do a quick cleanup and we'll move on to the front. Everything is looking very good. Let's look at the front. All right, doing good. Asking how much to fix the backlight on the iPhone 6s. How much to fix which one? The backlight on the iPhone 6s. Pin number one is loose because the pad under pin number one is broken, so we're gonna have to run a jumper wire. Pin number two is good. This is good. This is loose. This is good. This is good. This is good, good. We have to run the wire from here. We have to run the wire on this pin here. So the last pin on the right connects with the circle here. And then pin number 16, we're gonna have to do the same thing. It's loose, we're gonna have to run the wire up to that point here. Let's do that right now. All right, so I had to leave this overnight because time was running out. I applied an overcoat over the exposed area of pin number three. So initially I used the UV mask, but uh, I feel like the overcoat pen, this one here, is a lot better and it makes a more solid layer on top of the exposed pad. Let me show you what I mean. So for the UV mask, you can see the leftovers of the UV mask. It looks something like this. Whereas the overcoat pen, you can barely see it's there, but it's there. It's covering the pad. Let me see if we change our light a bit. Now this pad is connecting to pin number three. So if we want to test the continuity between pin number three and the exposed area on the board, we should not hear a beep because there's a coat over that pad. You see? 
the reason we added the overcoat or we put a layer over this exposed pad which connects to pin number three is because we want to run a wire from pin number four all the way to here and by soldering a wire here that wire may touch the pad that you see here so we do not want that wire to touch pin number three or this pad and that's why we added this layer of overcoat let's go ahead and solder a wire we already have a wire we soldered it onto this component okay now what i want to do is test if pin number three is touching pin number four we do not want that to happen so meter in continuity mode and uh, we're gonna do between three and four okay so we do not have any continuity michigan I sent that iPad, and you should get it to there tomorrow. Uh, which one? Yeah, so listen, but when I, I didn't put my number and stuff. Oh, okay, okay. Customer did not fill in the mailing form, and he just sent his tablet. That's not good, because we do not know who that tablet is for, or who that device is for. Anytime you want to ship stuff over, fill out the mailing form, so we have your information in our database. Let me just add his information quick. And this wire is going to run all the way over to this component. So once we are done, we're going to reroute those wires so everything is nice and neat. But for now, we're just going to finish off wiring the rest of the pins. And then we'll take care of this later. Yeah, I'm calling to get a quote on how much it would cost to replace a, a cracked iPad uh, Pro 10 and a half inch. This overcoat that I'm putting on right now, once it's hard, it's going to hold those wires in place so they don't move anymore. Yes. How much would it cost me to fix the speakers on my iPhone 7 Plus? Now, what I want to do is I want to check that no two pins are touching each other. We should not hear a beep anywhere. 
those two are not touching those two are not touching three and four are not touching they're not touching and what else is there Okay, so no two pins are shorting out. Now what I want to do is test each pin and its respected destination. Pin number one, we did not run any wires because the pad is still good. Is it connecting? And it's connecting. Pin number two should be connecting to the capacitor that we see here. That's pin number two. good pin number three is ground so it should be continuous here pin number four is this component here pin number five should be connecting to this component here. Pin number six is a no connect. Pin number seven is this one here. Pin number eight here. And pin number eight here. And yes, pin number nine should be connecting right over here. Ten is connecting, should connect to right over here. N number ten, okay. Number eleven, number eleven is this one here. So 11 is this, very good. Number 12 is ground, so if we touch the connector and we touch pin number 12, it's ground. Pin number 13 should be connecting uh, to the pad that's under the coat here. Okay, we're not gonna be able to test it from here. You can see the whole line moving, which means that the pin is connecting with the line. Pin number 14 is solid pin number 15 is ground let's test this is 16 here 17 we already have a line a wire 18 18 here is ground and pin number 19 we already have the wire here so everything is good. So we restored every single trace. The HDMI port should work. Now the customer did not send the whole console, so we're gonna ship the board in this condition. If everything is good and there's nothing else wrong with the board, then his console should work. I hope this motherboard is gonna work. Everything is restored, everything is soldered on properly. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll do something else in the next video.